How does a Goldman Sachs alum with three decades in finance and zero experience in the public sector end up with their signature printed on American money if confirmed by the Senate? Because of one Trump card, loyalty to Donald Trump. Stephen Mnuchin's path to the 77th Secretary of the Treasury of the United States happened because he was in the right place at the right time. This is the story of how Stephen Mnuchin saw the deal of a lifetime and took a gamble on Trump to become the most important financial figure in America. If you were to write a novel about a privileged young man setting out on a privileged course of privilege, you would write about Stephen Mnuchin. That's Max Abelson. I'm a reporter at Bloomberg News. Max followed Mnuchin for weeks for a Bloomberg business cover story with... I'm Zach Mutter. I'm a reporter on the finance team here at Bloomberg. To track Mnuchin's path from Wall Street to Hollywood to bank ownership to politics. First, some background. Steven Mnuchin is the son of Robert Mnuchin, a former partner at Goldman Sachs for three decades. Who was so respected that his nickname at the investment bank was Coach. Stephen Mnuchin attended Yale in 1981. Where he was a member of the Skull and Bones Secret Society uh, and drove a Porsche in New Haven. Where he was publisher of the Yale Daily News. Stephen Mnuchin was ceaseless in his attempts to get across to us that he was the youngest ever publisher. He kept emphasizing that the publishers are normally juniors, but he did it as a sophomore. After graduating in 1985, he took an internship at the investment bank Solomon Brothers. When his internship ended, his career at Goldman Sachs began. In 2002, after 17 years at Goldman, Mnuchin left to work at a hedge fund owned by the liberal billionaire and enemy of the right, George Soros. He wanted to start his own fund, and he started it under the auspices of Soros. And then later, he kind of went off on his own, gave it its own name, called it Dune Capital. Uh, but the funding was still from Soros. Mnuchin then branched out into the arts. In 2006, he got into Hollywood, buying a DreamWorks film library in partnership with Soros, and he financed movies, one of which was Avatar, the highest grossing picture of all time. His next career move, while making Mnuchin extremely wealthy, has been a lightning rod of controversy. He said that in the summer of 2008, he was watching news footage of people lined up around the block of a bank that was then called uh, IndyMac. He said out loud, I've seen this game before, this bank is going to fail. We need to buy it. A group of Goldman Sachs partners led by Steven Mnuchin cobbled together $1.6 billion to kind of recapitalize this smoking crater of a bank. Mnuchin changed the name of the bank from IndyMac to One West. And like within a year, it was just stunningly profitable. And it was profitable at the same time some critics started calling it a foreclosure machine. They foreclosed on something like 36,000 homeowners during that six-year period. When they went to sell the bank last year, there was a public hearing and borrower after borrower stood up and, and talked to these, gave these horrible stories. According to Bloomberg calculations, after Mnuchin sold One West for $3.4 billion in 2015, Mnuchin may have personally pocketed more than $380 million from the sale. When Trump talked to, to people about Mnuchin, what he was so impressed by was the amount of money he'd made on that deal. After IndyMac and Hollywood, Mnuchin's turn to politics came from a chance encounter with Donald Trump at a Republican primary victory party in New York. He wasn't planning on being on stage with Trump, but then he sort of ends up bumping into Trump beforehand and going on stage with him. And the next day, Trump asks him to help him on the campaign. And he asks Mnuchin to start fundraising for the first time. And so it's going to be a six-month investment of time that could pay off big time at the end. He said to Zach and I, no one's going to be asking why I'm doing this if I'm in the administration. And Mnuchin was right. The payoff was huge. When Trump won the election, Mnuchin was rewarded for his loyalty during the campaign with the Treasury role. But like Trump, Mnuchin's views on economic policy are shrouded in mystery. So while there isn't a whole lot to go on in seeing how Mnuchin will navigate political waters, he fits in perfectly with a Trump cabinet that is low on experience, but high on loyalty.